<laughs> well, just, you know, every now and then we'd have to get up pretty early to get to locations. So, you know, basically, I mean, you get up at like 3.30, you know, 4 a.m. to get to set, you know, was very difficult. You go at times. At times. We just can't go. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you guys remember working in Death Valley? Do you remember those hotels that we were put up? We literally had the floor. It was nasty. We were walking on the floor and our feet were black. The hotel was so nasty. So, yeah, if we had more money on that set, I think that we would have definitely asked for another hotel. So, did you like it? We're not doing You know what? That episode when we were in Death Valley came out awesome. I think it was that true glue to the rescue. Yeah, that was an awesome episode. It was all for the name of acting and love and powering. <laughs> You're the only one here. <laughs> In your documentary, Don't You Forget About Me, you went on a, on a trip just to find John Hughes. I just want to know, other than the love of the man's art, what made you do it? That you just got up one day and decided. I have to find this man. Um, does everyone know who John Hughes is? Yeah. <laughs> John Hughes directed some awesome f films, a lot of them about, about uh, teenagers, like Sixteen Candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Breakfast Club, Some Kind of Wonderful, Pretty in Pink, Weird, weird Science. <laughs> and um, I wanted to, uh, right after Power Rangers, my, my idea was that I was going to take some of the money I made and make a teen film. And I started to write a script, and like a quarter of the way through the page, I realized it was crap. And I realized that I, I, I wanted it to be really authentic, like the teen films uh, that, I, that I watched and loved. And the ones that came out afterwards, I didn't love very much. I'm not going to name what they are, but um, I was like, I don't want to make films like that. I realized that I, couldn't, I shouldn't be making a film like John Hughes. I should be making a film about the guy. Because no one really, people spoke about him but kind of behind closed doors. So everyone knows those films, but not everyone knew the name John Hughes itself. I, feel, I felt like his name should be on a list with like Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, Woody, uh, Woody Allen, all, this, all the great American film directors. So I got myself in a van and I interviewed Ali Sheedy and the rest is in the film. Available on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question. <laughs> I used to get off the bus and run home, beating my little sister to watch Power Rangers. So yeah, I was a huge Power Rangers fan. Yeah, that's my little sister. Why don't we bring her up here? She did. She did an episode. Anybody remember Mandy? Two episodes. Two episodes. <laughs> I did, because I was there from the beginning, so I didn't tell. Next, next, thank you. I was wondering if the actors, they experienced a fantastic show, and the first question is, do you guys still fans after you were involved? Still fans or friends? Still fans. What were the questions again? Typecasting. Oh, typecasting. Yeah, right, they're going to typecast me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I've never played a villain since. <laughs> There's a little box in every casting director's office that says, Dip Shit Evil. <laughs> and in that box is my photo. <laughs> no typecasting comes into it. And did we ever have friends after it or fans? I didn't have any before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, am I a fan of the show? I watched three episodes. <laughs> Two of them I was in, and one they were in. That was it. Yeah.
Um, I've casted, mm, I think it's a little battle we have, right, Rangers, at the beginning, but I cut my hair for that reason. I wanted to just, you know, get into the mix, put some new stuff, and kind of get away from the Carlos character for a minute. So, uh, I don't think we really got typecasted, but um, it's a great, great experience, you guys. Thank you very much. You guys are all loyal, and now it's like a culture, so definitely a good time. People say you're a girl? <laughs> I always play boy characters. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Mosco, <Moscow>, moderator. <laughs> um, hi guys. Hi. Uh, this is for the uh, Time Force. This is for the Time Force cast. What was it like working with Edward Lawrence Albert? Oh. Um, He's great. You take that too, but I'm gonna, I'll just say a little bit. Whoever from the studio, bunch of He's just the sweetest, nicest guy. I, best guy in the show. Wait. No, I'm kidding. I love this character. Yeah, he was. <laughs> the thing about, about uh, Edward is that he was probably the most well-versed man I've ever met in every aspect. It seems like we would, you'd go walking through the desert and suddenly he could speak to the Native Americans and then next thing you know he's feeding bees. Like he just can do anything. <laughs> then suddenly he's got a spear and he's flicking it around like, like a warrior. So the guy seemed to know, he was the jack of all trades, he knew everything about everything. I mean he was even in overseas when that tank was coming in China, right? Yeah, he was there. Yeah, he was there for that. Just so the guy was like, a, yeah, he just was everywhere. And there's actually a, uh, a really great hike in Malibu that's named after him. Yeah, and I actually was on it the other day, yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a hike in Malibu that takes you out to this unbelievable waterfall. Uh, went out there the other day and it's, it's named after him, so the guy just... A lot of charity work, very great man, and I learned a ton from him, so it was a huge loss to, uh, to have him go so soon.